All right, watch fans. Today is Friday, and that means another watch review and an unboxing. Um, very excited about today. Um, my my watch hobby has been kind of all over the place, and this new brand, it's not a new brand, but it's a brand that I've been recently very interested in. Um, if I'm correct, this should be an Ingersoll uh, Gresham. It's rose gold, has some cool stuff on it, and we'll see it. Sorry, I've had a lot of caffeine. I had two monsters of coffee, and I just made a Cuban coffee for myself. Those of you from Miami know what that is. It's awesome. I should probably do these videos with the uh, NPR voice. Yes, and that is uh, Rachmaninoff with the third opus from the... Blah, blah. No, I can't do that. Oh, look at that. Very cool. This is a box I've never seen before. Uh, this must be one of the earlier ones, and I think this is. I think this is a newly discontinued model, and this is their first year of court, so that should be 2014, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, no well less appointed. I get some cool thing. Is this a chocolate? I don't know. Probably old by that point. Manual. We'll see. Start putting this stuff aside so you guys can see everything. This looks like a wallet. Sweet. Hopefully there's money in there to pay for this. Okay, I don't know what this is, but oh my gosh. This is wild. All right, we'll get back to that. I got to see what this stuff is. So I got this cool little thing here, a wrist tape. This is a first for me. Man. All right, well, I'm going to have to do that a little bit later because that is, that is wild. Um, wow, this... <laughs> This is really cool. There's a whole history of uh, Ingersoll in here. This is this is very cool. I've never seen this before. This is wild. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna scan each one of these pages, or maybe I'm kind of lazy. I'll just put them up. Um, we'll go into that later. I know you guys want to see the watch. My viewership drops off pretty quickly uh, if I don't show the watch fast. So. I'll get right into it. All right, let's get back to this. I'll move all this stuff to the side, and we can go over that later, because I know you guys want to see it. <clears throat> cool box, cool leather box. Oh, look at that. I don't know what's going on here, but this is cool. Very nice. That's a decent size. It's not crazy looking. And it's ticking. Wow, this is this is nice aggression. So what I liked about this watch, if you don't already see, it has moon phase. I was very excited about that. This is a new watch, but it's a new old stock, so it's been been here for a bit. But um, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. So, all right. Before we go any further, I want you guys to watch a quick video on the history of Ingersoll. I think you'll like it. And then we'll get right back into the watch, and I'll show a little bit more, show some of these other things, and then we'll talk about the movement, and then I'll just go on and give you my opinions. Thank you.
All right, now that you've had the opportunity to, to see the history of Ingersoll, we'll get back into the watch. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is in between that video and the movement video, obviously if I'm really doing an unboxing, which I, which I did do, uh, and then show the movement video, I have to open it up. So typically after I take my video, I'm sort of giving it a bit of a secret on, on what I do in my videos. Uh, I actually take the watch apart before I go do the movement video because I, I actually want to see and validate what movement's in there. Um, and I'll go into more detail with the movement. I'll have a quick two minute video so you can see, but I'm actually very impressed. Um, a lot of these watches, as you know, have been coming with Chinese movements, which have improved significantly um, over the past few years. But I discovered this watch actually has a Myota uh, movement, which, as you know, basically lasts forever. They are the Toyota Camry of, of movements. And I'm a sucker for, for moon phase uh, watches. And so that's what that's what really struck me with this watch. Um, I really like this watch, and now that I know there's a Myota in it, uh, I I have a little bit. Um, I won't say that I I didn't dis that I disliked the Japanese movements in the other one because the other Ingersoll watches have been absolutely some of my favorite, but this one this is a a, a real nice watch. Um, and I guess I'll just get right into it. I I paid um, about about seventy dollars for this one. This one normally retailed for about three hundred dollars. Um, I, 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 it, what sold me was the day date, as you can see, uh, in, on the dials. I really like that. That's really classy. I want to make sure you get a good look at it. Um, and every watch that I get, whether you guys know it or not, um, or whether I mention it or not, I actually take apart every single watch, even brand new ones. Cause a lot of these watches, they, they sit on a shelf. So when I get a new watch, I completely take it apart because <clears throat> I want to know everything about it. So I take the crown off, I take the movement out, and I put it, and, and I'll actually show you right now, I'll put it up on the screen on the right so I make some room for myself. Um, I I take the face out and I literally put it on my little pad here, and then I go and, and do everything else. So I've since replaced the battery in this. I actually cleaned the inside of the face. Many people don't realize that, and I'll just give a, kit, a quick secret. Uh, a lot of the older watches that you buy or watches that have been sitting on the shelf, I don't know how this happens. Um, I used to think it came from smokers, but that's not the case. Uh, a lot of these watches, they build up a film, <clears throat> which a lot of it comes from the oils in the watches. Um, even even the automatic watches, I'm sorry, even the quartz watches, uh, a lot of it comes from the manufacturing process, uh, just the oils that, that come off the gears and they, they end up forming a thin layer of soot on the inside of the watch face, and it gives sort of a clouded look. Now, I don't know what the video looked like before this, but I just cleaned it. I use a microfiber cloth, and I can go into some, I, I can actually do a video for that just to, just to spend some time, but um, I also take out all the gaskets. I re-grease them, or I replace them if I have a nicer, thicker one, because I always think it's, it's good. Uh, you know, to do that if I intend to really use the watch or if a, as a, a watch hobbyist and reseller, um, as a hobby reseller, it's not a business. Uh, I want to make sure that what I'm selling, I have gone through and, and I can truly tell, say that it's a, it's an excellent watch. Now, this is one that I do not intend to sell because I love this. This watch is excellent. Um, but uh, I'll go into more detail. Uh, I do want to show uh, a video of the of the movement and so i'll do that in a second but i did want to say it says it's a five atm which as you know is five atmospheres i'll go into more detail but i was super impressed by this it has a gasket on the inside of the head on the shaft which interfaces with the shaft tube and one on the back i see no reason why this is only a five atm if it were me i would definitely say this is a 10 atm i think you can go swimming with this and uh, and even some light snorkeling. I don't know why you would. This is a nice watch. But all right, uh, please watch the movement video. I think you'll be very surprised. It's an excellent movement uh, by Miyota. It's a it's a no frills, lasts forever movement. Uh, and then I'll just go into more details of the watch. Thank you. The Ingersoll Gresham uses the 6P29 No Jewel Tuning Fork Quartz Movement by Citizen Miyota. This is a high quality movement designed specifically to support a moon phase complication. 
Myote is a Japanese movement manufacturer that is part of the Citizen Group of Companies. The Citizen Group's movement brand, which was launched in 1959, now produces some 100 million calibers per year in its various factories. Most of them are quartz calibers. Saku in the Nagu province is the group's largest facility and produces the calibers currently found in this watch. The Citizen Group is highly integrated since it is also a major player in the manufacture of machine tools and CNCs, which it supplies internationally. Even the oil used in the machines is a homemade product. This integration allows Citizen Group to support the highest standard of quality, able to quickly detect problems and defects on assembly lines. At regular intervals, an alarm sounds and components are discount, discarded down a separate track. The 6P29 is a typical three-hand caliber with date of the month at the three o'clock location, and day of the week at the 9 o'clock location. The most prominent feature of the watch is the presence of the moon phase at the 6 o'clock location. There are two variations of the 6P29, the 6P29-00A and the 6P29-00W. The Ingersoll Grisham uses the 6P29-00W, which uses a moon phase disc with navy blue background and yellow moon and stars. The 6P29 uses the SR621SW silver oxide battery and supports a hacking feature for extended battery life. Typical battery life is estimated at approximately three years fully engaged with up to six years with the hacking feature enabled. Accuracy of the movement is quite good, maintaining plus or minus 20 seconds per month at normal operating ambient temperature. All right, so as you can see, this watch uses the Myota movement. It's a very nice movement. Um, before I go into more details about the watch, let's just get rid of the packaging so we can talk about it. This is nice packaging. I think uh, Ingersoll is saving a little bit of money. I can't really tell if this watch is older or newer. I think this watch might actually be uh, um, one of the older ones. But it's a nice case, leather. It's very nice. There's the, the SKU in case you're interested, and there's the model number. I've not seen this. Um, I'll add some factoids. Um just to kind of help with it but this is their quartz line was introduced in 2014 and uh i they've been spectacular as far as i'm concerned i would purchase the quartz movements the, the quartz watches well before i would the mechanical watches i love mechanical watches but the ingersoll quartz watches are are really some spectacular spectacular watches so i'll put all this stuff to the side and make some room um this this history of Ingersoll is, I think this is great. I think this is excellent that Ingersoll has decided to put this in here. I wish they'd include this as a PDF because I'd give it to you. Um, you already saw most of this in the in the movement. I thought this is pretty cool. They found a, an Ingersoll pocket watch on the Titanic. It really just shows how much this company has really been uh, a part of American history. I know I know that the company's owned by Hong Kong. Um, we like Hong Kong. They're our allies. Uh, I have no problem with it, um, and honestly, the Chinese movements that they typically put in here have been really good, so uh, I, I am a fan, don't have a problem with it. This is excellent. Uh, this is the instruction manual, a little bit different than the one that you guys have seen in some of my other reviews. This, I think, focuses primarily on the watches that you see. And this, I'm trying to look for a date. I'm not seeing one. I know it's post-2014. This is a new old stock movement. So, a uh, new old stock watch. So, but I am I am very pleased with it. Take this little tag off. Because I intend to wear this today. So, but this watch is spectacular. I'm just going to get right into it. Let's measure it. Just so we can uh, get some of these things out of the way before I forget. Oops, it's one of the caskets. This is a 40 millimeter case. So, it's not obscene. It's not like some of the other ones. This is a good, decent sized case that anybody can wear. That's 40 millimeters. Um, the, that's about 20 millimeters for the, for the bracelet. Um, it's a nice bracelet and it actually feels a lot better than, I'm trying to see, it feels stamped and rolled and I would confirm that that is the case. But the watch isn't so heavy that that becomes a burden on it. One of the things that I, one of the gripes that I had about the bracelet is uh, for for my uh, Wenger, Wenger C Force that I talked about before. 
is that the bracelet was stamped and rolled and it felt like a heavy watch with a piece of string. I'm not really a fan of steel bracelets and I may quite honestly take this bracelet off and put a nice leather leather strap on it. I can see that that would do really well on this. More and more for luxury watches, I just don't see the point, especially if this isn't going to be uh, some sort of a sports watch or diving watch. It's For me, it just, just doesn't make a lot of sense. But this is a gorgeous watch. It's got, as you can see, sort of machine turned around the moon phase. Let's get right into it. Everything gets set by here. Um, I'm going to set the time. It is almost time for beers. Uh, I'd ask my Alexa what time it is, but she's not in here, so I can't harass her. I think it is. You know what? We'll set it to <laughs> to 150, so that it's <laughs> 153, because I don't want it to mess up, block anything. I like the blued second hand. As you guys know, that that is typically done by superheating the steel, and it turns blue. I'm not sure that's the case. This is probably paint, although it does look like an anodized steel. Let's see if I can adjust the date and time. So forward, so if I do the crown counterclockwise, it sets the date. So I'm going to go ahead and it sets the, uh, the date of the month. So let me go ahead and set that now. Works pretty well. Today is the 20th, 30th. So it's actually correct. Oh, perfect. Okay, and then when I go the other way, it should set the, should set the day. No, okay, I'll have to figure that out. Uh, I see, okay, that probably has to be done by, yep. I've seen this before. So in this case, to set the day, you have to literally make the, the watch go all the way around. Um, so that's, that's not uncommon. Uh, it's, and it'll also set the date but that's okay. Let's see, it should sit. Yep, there we go. Okay, that's fine. So, so you know, it's nice because it shows midday. There we go. All right. So I'll be I'll be spending some time with that. But I love I love the Arabic numerals on here. Uh, very classy look. This reminds me of something that might be 1930s, 1940s era. Very classy. Um, you could wear this with pretty much anything. I have very. Uh, big hands. This has got a nice big chain. I'm obviously going to have to adjust it, and I think that's what that strap is for. But I have, um, I think I have wide wrists. I have big hands. I can palm a basketball, and this looks really good on here. I'm super pleased with this. Let's let's check out the loom. Definitely want to see that. Got to see the loom shot. There's my pad. All right. Maybe there's none on it, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> nothing. There is nothing to illuminate. Okay, so this is a loomless watch. That is a first for me, but I am okay with that because this watch is still gorgeous. So, there you have it, kids. A watch with no loom. And that's okay because this is an awesome watch. So, hopefully you like this video. If you have any questions... Uh, please leave them at, uh, below in the comment section. You can also ask me to do any reviews for any watches you're interested in. I primarily do under 500 because um, I'm cheap, but I'm also doing the watch gang thing. So I'll be doing reviews on the watch gang. If you have any repair questions, feel free to also do that. Uh, I do all watch repairs. I don't take consignment. I usually do it myself. Um, I prefer to just teach myself, fix watches, sell them sometimes. Will not be selling this one. I like this one. Um, but please subscribe. I really appreciate it. It makes this channel worth it. Um, and it, it helps also push push the, the views, which I need to make this channel worthwhile. Thank you very much.